So this week we're back in my parents' bungalow project to help rip out the remaining bits of the kitchen. My dad's already disconnected the pipes and we're going to rip out this wall since last week we actually ripped off the chimney. I had to think about that. And then we're going to just cake everything else out and focus on wallpaper stripping. Should be nice and easy, but then we'll see what kind of damage we've got left behind. So yeah, keep on watching just to see how we get on. So in our first video, you saw me and my husband sort out the garden area, but on the same day, my dad got on the roof to knock the chimney down. And that's because the chimney breast took up some of the kitchen space and we wanted to open it out. And we couldn't just rip the chimney breast out, otherwise the chimney and all its bricks would have collapsed. And there's no need for it because there was a gas fire on the other side where the living room is. So with it being a bungalow, not very high up, I asked if my dad would let me go up there so I could experience some of it. Now normally he said he'd use a jigger pick, which he'd forgot, so he showed me how to remove each brick with a lump hammer. Please note I am not a professional and if you do do this, this will be at your own risk. But for each brick that I knocked out, my dad would walk down and take it to the adjoining flat garage roof. Although it doesn't look scary looking up, it still was quite scary just because of the incline. And after getting a bit of a taster of it, my dad carried on doing the rest of it. And unfortunately I didn't get the whole thing on film because it is a tricky area. So I filmed from afar of my dad putting some of the beams back and he fetched loads of roof tiles that he had and put it all back. But he found some of the top tiles weren't the right size. So this is what it looks like for now until he sources the right ones. So now we're gonna skip ahead to the following weekend where my parents had already removed the hot water cylinder tank that had been suspended above the fridge and the electric oven. So this is in the kitchen again, just next to the chimney breast. And this is the kind of thing I generally stay away from because I'm not competent enough to even touch it. Whoa. I'll leave that for now. So I've come prepared this week. We've got camping chairs because there's nowhere to sit and a dog bed. I don't think Hans likes this house yet because there's nowhere comfy for him to sit. So I'm going to leave this in the room that I'm going to work in. Come on. Hi Joe. Hello. But before we started knocking out the chimney breast, we needed to completely clear the area, get rid of all of the last kitchen units. Everything was switched off, disconnected, made the electric safe in here. And while I was there, I quickly removed the rest of the kitchen tiles with this SDS drill. This was definitely so much quicker than using the end of a hammer. In fact, in the wall cavity, I found loads of 1960s scrunched up newspaper. Then finally onto ripping the mortar off the bricks and I use the SDS drill for this again, just chipping it away. Although yes, you should be wearing ear defenders and a mask. Unfortunately, because we're miles away from home, we kept forgetting to bring stuff with us and I'm just taking things steady. And before my dad started removing the top bricks that were still in the loft, he asked me to remove the mortar around where the old gas pipes were here to the gas fire on the other side. And we worked on this area first so we could remove the flue. Then I moved on to the top bricks and that's where I left it until the following week. But by this time we got into a rhythm, we brought our TV and decided to come back in our car rather than our big van so we'd sleep in the house on an airbed and we could get our car through the height barrier at the local skip because there was so much rubbish at this point to remove all those kitchen carcasses and stuff. But finally I absolutely did not forget to bring my health and safety gear. And the further down I got, the dustier and messier it was. And I'd repeat with the hammer drill, the lump hammer, and occasionally a much larger one. It really is amazing how many bricks go into a fireplace and how much effort needed to go into this to create one extra kitchen unit space. And we also uncovered the original archway of the chimney and you can see vintage soot. And then my husband finished off the rest. And I actually thought all of the bricks would be going to the skip. I hadn't realised that my dad was saving it all in a pile 
There's no mortar on these because we'll be using them again to build up a wall for an ensuite. Now just going back a bit, while my dad was making things safe, me, my mum and husband took the time to remove all the wood chip wallpaper. But I've decided, because I've got quite a few tips, I'm going to roll that into a next video and talk you through my process because I actually really enjoy this. It takes me all the way back to 2014 when I had to do this in our very first bungalow. Wood chip wallpaper was everywhere. So hopefully I'll see you in my next one.